he, he owns property at Augusta Avenue, and he has some drainage issues. And he he was here uh, several about a year ago about the same issue. And we want to we want to recognize you, Mr. Williams. Go ahead and proceed, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I more or less piggyback it on what Ms. Bright presented. Uh, no one is against affordable housing for anyone. But in our neighborhood, we are inundated with houses for rent. We don't need any more. But the basic thing that I have risen to consult you with is drainage. When the initial thing were done, you said drainage would be taken care of. It hasn't been. I'm a product of that. We're building uh, River Bend 4. And we are concerned with drainage. Nothing has been done. Mrs. Bright did a wonderful job in outlining what the street's going to be like if floods come back. Without a long to-do of anything, before anything is done, drainage need to be addressed. If it isn't addressed, it's a waste of time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Mr. Larry Trial, please. Yeah, I'm going to give you a minute and. Uh, I'm going to talk to the council. We're going to decide how we're going to handle this particular issue. Thank you, Mr. Trow. Please proceed. I am Larry Trow, director of Woodside Samtown. And uh, we are against these uh, apartments because, number one, uh, with all the apartments that's being built, down Low Third, Samtown and Woodside, between Hudson and Tulane, I guarantee there's over 50 or 60 apartments being built down there. And with all of these apartments, uh, if they don't get rented, this, all of this is gonna, gonna be returned into Section 8 houses. And if they go to Section 8 houses, we bringing back the drugs and everything else that wanna come out there, just because of them, the rent has gone down. Um, the other thing is drainage. Uh, when Mr. Smith was councilman, we were talking about a 45-acre detention pond. It never did get built. And uh, because this water won't have anywhere to go. We collect the water from MacArthur Drive and all across LA. And it comes through Samtown Woodside. When that canal is full, there's nowhere for that water to go. River Bend and everybody else, even what Ms. Bryce was talking about, all this is going to be full of water because there's nowhere for it to go. When them canals are full, there's nowhere to go. You can't pump it off nowhere. But when Mr. Smith was talking about the 45-acre detention pond, nobody listened. <laughs> but somebody needs to take heed to it and listen to it because this water has to have somewhere to go. We get a 10 or 15-inch rain, everything is flooded on the same town, Lower Third, Woodside, all that's gonna be flooded because the water's coming to us to the south side of town. And we need somebody to take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you. The chair recognized Mr. Jules Greens for a quick minute because we're about to wrap it up. After Mr. Gr Mr. Uh, Jules will speak, I'm also uh, allowed for Mr. Goins uh, because this is his district. Go ahead, Mr. G Mr. Green. Good afternoon, Council. I'm Jules Green. I actually live in District 4, Mr. Silver's District. Capacity times velocity. Piggybacking on the presentation on the Versailles show of the area down lower third, you're going to build something and then come back and do the drainage. Versailles, beautifully done, has sidewalks, has good draining already. So all these people who have the intention of doing businesses, apartments, move in, construction sites ready, they're able to move in with no problem. Once you build these apartments, you have to then go back and do the drainage. The people on Fifth Street's gonna catch it. I know Ms. LaCour, visit her house often. If it rains down there, you almost need a road boat. So if you're gonna add this problem, it's sad, it's sad. Versailles Boulevard, treat these people down the lower third the same. I don't live down there, but I, live, I know folks that do. Treat us all the same. Saying us, 
meeting everyone in the city of Alexandria. I thank you for your time. Think about the, your vote that you're going to do. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jules Green. Okay. At this time, the chair recognizes Mr. Goins. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Larvidan. And thank everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, this is what democracy uh, is about. First, I just want to applaud uh, Mr. David Strange and uh, the money that you've already invested and that you've attempted to invest uh, in our neighborhoods. We do appreciate you. I don't want you to uh, misconstrue any sentiments on tonight that uh, the community doesn't uh, respect you for what you're doing. I want to thank Mr. Rod Knowles for coming out. I want to thank Mr. Clifford Mola uh, for coming out. Mr. Joe Page, Pastor John Russell, uh, and Ms. Mary Williams, thank you all for coming out. Uh, the support uh, or the opposition for this project on tonight was overwhelmingly uh, more uh, than four. Uh, I represent the folks that approached that microphone and spoke out against this project. Uh, reluctantly, members of the council, I have to voice my opposition to this project. I think we need economic development in the lower third community, uh, but also I have to remember first that it's not my decision, but I am the voice of the people that elected me into this office. So I recommend uh, that we reject this ordinance. Okay. It, it is, uh, Chair recognizes Mr. Fowler. Uh, one of the concerns was, was drainage. Uh, I, I happened to uh, be able to review the drainage plan that was been drawn by, uh, I believe it was Mr. Willis. Uh, and it, it, there's been a uh, bid, and that project's going to be awarded, I believe, tonight. It's two weeks. So to say that the drainage is not being addressed, the drainage is being addressed, the project's designed, the bids are in, and the award should happen in two weeks. So drainage is addressed. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Fowler. Any other questions or comments from the uh, council? Chair, recognize Ms. Gibson. Um, I have a few questions. Mr. Strange, will your apartment complex accept housing? I'm sorry? Will the, uh, the, new, the new phase of the apartment complex Steps that you are microphone. proposing, will it accept housing as payment? The Section 8 housing, I'm sorry, thank you. Yeah, uh, as a result of our funding source that are ostensibly federal funds, we can't discriminate against anyone uh, based upon the fact that they have a housing voucher. I can tell you that in phase one, we have 56 residential units. Four of those units, four residents that live there receive a portion of a subsidy as it relates to the housing program. The other 52 pay 100% of their rent. And those or pay the lion's share of it. So we, we can't discriminate against it. However, I would say that, that our rent structure is such that uh, we, we're able to, to have a, a modicum credit score that we can utilize, that we have to apply across the board. So you know, whether you would have a housing voucher or have a job and pay 100% of your rent, you're, you're gonna have to meet our minimum credit score, which you know, by and large would preclude someone that was not otherwise working and therefore would not be entitled to a voucher. Those that are on the waiting list, do you know how many of those are coming to you with housing vouchers? I mean, I would expect that the numbers would be the same. I mean, across our, our several thousand units that we have in, in many states, uh, you know, across all of our developments, it is substantially less than 10% of any of our residents in, in what we call workforce housing have any kind of assistance. If, if you know this, um, and I'm throwing this out there to you or even the administration, um, do you not, th are, are these new people moving into Alexandria or is this just renters moving around? No, it, it, well, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's some rental moving around, it's some people transitioning uh, from housing that they own that they're no longer able to maintain. We've had a lot of people that were displaced as a result of you know, the economic and mortgage crisis. You know, I think it was unfortunate that we didn't have uh, time today to hear from a lot of other people that were here with us to, to, to support our side of the ledger uh, that, that, you know, someone was going to speak today that, that, you know, their utility bill was over a thousand dollars at a rental house they were paying six hundred dollars a month for and where they live with us now it's four hundred dollars a month with a rental bill of a hundred dollars. You know, that just changed their monthly disposable income to a thousand dollars, you know, to the positive for one person. There are a lot of people like that, and I wanted to say one other thing, if you, if you indulge me in this one thing, is that, you know, everyone that, that is a resident of our development is at work 
or was at work when this meeting started. We had many, many people that wanted the opportunity to come speak today, but they simply couldn't afford to take, or weren't allowed to take the time off for work to come have their voice heard today. So on behalf of those people, I, I wanna present, you know, their side of the story and, and say that, you know, we, everyone that lives there loves being there and we are in, you know, because of the waiting list, these developments, uh, they're, they're a, 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 it's, a, it's a wonderful program. Did you, uh, you, did you complete your questioning? I, I think so. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, you want to say something real quick? Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Levin. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, stand up and go to the microphone, sir. We can see you. Okay, and go ahead and talk. While he's coming to the podium, I, I would just like to applaud Councilman uh, Jonathan Goins for the decision he made today based on what he heard from the residents of District 3. And I can assure you that Councilman Goins, looking at the commercial side of this based on what was heard today, will continue to work toward that goal. Uh, and looking toward what the residents would like to see in full commercial uh, in that respective area. I feel like the individuals that's here today, uh, like the Rod Noses and those respective people who have worked uh, in our city and economic development, would truly be glad to also listen to those things and work with you as the district councilman in the city to work toward those things to see that you know those things are one day eventually met. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, your quick question, uh, please. My name is Benny Smith. I'm new to this area, and if you hadn't have said anything, I wouldn't have raised my hand. But I did move here uh, just a, less than two years ago. From where? From California. Okay. And because I'm retired, I know that my income wouldn't allow me to stay in California very long. So by me being on a strict uh, income, mm -hmm. I knew it would be to my advantage to live somewhere where it would be affordable for me to live. And where I live at now, it makes it affordable for me to live. So you are one of the current residents? Not in the unit that most of the folks is talking about, okay. but in, I'm in Stratford Manor. It's one of the other units that the uh, developer was uh, developing. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir, for those comments. Welcome to our city. We hope you can, hope we, we, we show you the hospitality that you deserve. Should I recognize Mr. Silver then, Mr. Goins? couple of things. First, I want to applaud the administration for the work they've done and also those people bringing this idea to your group. Uh, secondly, I, I truthfully hate to see $20 million go down the tube because it's very difficult to get people here as evidence by what we're trying to do with the hotel and other areas. However, Mr. Lavadain is the titular head of your district and I have to be governed by his recommendations. Mr. Goyne. Uh, Mr. Goyne, I mean. And I thought, you know, we have about 75 people here. I don't know what happened if we had the entire group from down there uh, or maybe the entire group of a vote for District 3. But be that as it may, I, as a member of council, have to defer to the wishes of the person representing your district, and that's the reason. And for the sake of concern, I guess we have to make some recommendation to the uh, councilman at large later on this evening, and I defer to the chairman and be governed by his wishes. Okay. I've got something to uh, real on. quick, Ms. Gibson. Okay, yes. With this being public property, it's owned by the city, um, and, and I so wish the administration was here to, to answer this question, but has it been, has an RFP gone out for a mixed use now that seemingly we are considering a, a mixed use for the property? I can answer that question. Okay, yes, sir. We've, this, th we've had these things out now for well over a year. This is the first RFP concrete deal. RFP for commercial. Yes. I'm asking, oh, has an RFP it, gone out for the mixed use? for the hotels. We did the same thing here to see if we get things off and running. We've tried mm -hmm. several different things. So, I mean, we've, this, this is not, we've got pages and pages of work done on it, and that's just, this came up with the best deal. That was right, from the study. In fact, you have something in your book today stating what's happening in these areas, they're calling, they're calling it urban living throughout the country. Now, they're starting to come down here. This is for tomorrow, not today. Is, is that a yes or a no? Has RFPs for mixed use on this property gone out, or is it just RFPs for commercial? 
I couldn't ask. Would okay. you know, Mr. Well, Mr. Silva speaks on behalf of the administration. Can you answer, Mr. Goins? Thank you for that question, okay. uh, Councilwoman Gibson. But the reason why a mixed use RFP hasn't gone out is because the people only wanted commercial. And we only had one respondent, and that was Mr. <coughs> Strange, okay. uh, who came back with the mixed use uh, okay. proposal. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's, thank you, Ms. Gibson. Let's wrap it up. What is the, uh, we can have a motion, economic development committees are myself, Mr. Ms. Gibson, Mr. Silver. What is the committee's recommendation on this item? Mr. Goins uh, has, uh, has entertained uh, that he is in opposition to this. What is only, what with is caveat our, only because of uh, the citizens that, that showed up tonight. Okay. Do I have a motion or how you want to handle this? Excuse me. Can I direct a question to him? Yes, sir. Please do. Uh, question is this: how, What if there were more people came at a different time? Would that change your opinion? Uh, it's something that you consider. You know, but based on what we have tonight at this meeting. Well, the reason I'm saying this, if it's definitive, then it's over. Is that then we have to pay the price? The meeting was at 3.30. The citizens showed up. Uh, it was overwhelming opposition, and that's who I have to go with. Okay. That's it. I make, as and chairman, I'll, well, go ahead. I'll, 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 I'll just need to, to add this to, I, I, I understand where Mr. Silver is coming from, and, and pretty frankly, uh, if there would have been a, a public meeting in that community, we, we may have a, a different result as far as individuals' opinions. If we would have brought this to the public first, then there, there is a possibility. Okay. Thank you. To wrap this up, as chairman, I make a motion that we uh, oppose this motion, this ordinance. All in favor? Any, any second? I'll second it. We oppose it. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's it, most. Uh, I'm opposed yes. to it, but, I still, okay. but you still win. That's all right. Well, I mean, uh, a point, of, point of order. Uh, excuse me. Can everyone cry, please? Uh, can we uh, just clarify this as, as it's going to be recommended to the full council uh, from this uh, finance committee? I think our position is what Mr. Goins sees in opposition of it. So. Okay. With right. the caveat. With okay. the caveat. That it was only because of the, the opposition that showed up tonight. Okay. I think it's a great project for uh, the city and District 3. Okay, let's make a motion and eat and- uh, Can I ask a direct question to okay. the developer? R real quick, Mr. Silver, real to, quick. To the developers, let me real ask you this question. Presumably, this is going to <coughs> fail this evening. He's a caveat stating that perhaps if we had a larger group, something else would happen. Number three, though, in view of that, either it may be dead by this tonight or if it can be perpetuated, are you in a position to uh, having some sort of an extension to see if that uh, is workable. I hate to see $20 million go down the drain. No, sir. Okay, that's done. Okay, well, that's it. Thank you. Mr. President, on items um, two, three, and four, I would like to yield. We're gonna have to have those items next meeting because we have to go into the council meeting. Yes. Let me get your attention, please. Let me get your attention. Excuse me, uh, can everyone exit out of the order, please, for us? Kind of quietly. I'm going to finally get to meet you. I've been seeing you. Schedule of the Alexander City Council at this time.
Mr. President, with items two, three, and four. Hold on, it's, hold on, it's too loud. Can Development Committee, we will cancel those items for today and move them to the next committee meeting. We'll table them and discuss them next time. Yeah, yeah. Just say it again. Refer them to the next delay. council. We'll delay. Yeah, delay them to the next uh, council yeah. meeting. Two, three, and four. Uh, two, mm -hmm. three, and four. And move directly to the uh, finance committee meeting. Thank you, Mr. President. I call the Finance Committee meeting, Mr. Goins, Mr. Silver. I am number one to hear a report from the administration concerning the expenses and income for those in Fulton Hotel. Okay, uh, at this time, let the President speak. Mr. President, proceed. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Lavadane. At the last council meeting, uh, we discussed uh, some concern about the Alexander Fulton Hotel. One of my concerns uh, that came before this council and the finance committee was expenditures as it related to, number one, the capital maintenance fund, the money that we use prior to real water, and the work that was done in the Alexander Fulton Hotel. And I became concerned after hearing those complaints that we received based on their time and tenure here uh, at the hotel. During the last council meeting, we passed an additional ordinance for $140,000. At this respective meeting, the council requested an itemized report of those expenditures. I would like to thank the administration for the report that they sent to this council in discussion of the initiatives and some of the past ordinances that was given that the council passed. But one of the things that I would like to clarify for this council and what we ask for, Councilman Jonathan Goins is the district councilman for that district. And in my request to you and what we stated was that I would like to see the amount of money that has been spent and what was spent over the last physical year and over the months leading into the Rural Water Convention because I became concerned about the maintenance, what I heard about the concerns with elevators, and our continued effort to maintain that hotel and to keep it open. I took it upon myself to check without a tour, which hasn't been as of done yet. I've made that request to the city attorney. We've received several reports from the Mann administration, but again, it, it was not what I expected. I contacted the state of Louisiana, the health department, and for one portion of that hotel, received some alarming information in regards to Alexander Fulton. The cafeteria and its maintenance, some general areas of concern was only a few which I would name. General maintenance, the floors which had been cleaned. Plumbing is not maintained. Lighting intensive walk-in refrigerated units, drive from storage area or other rooms is not maintained. A current state food safety certificate is not posted. And I would be glad to provide this for all my fellow councilmen. I would not go into detail this report. But I would like to say this to my fellow councilmen and to the administration. What I would like to say on behalf of all of you, which are all my fellow councilmen, and from the administration. And Mr. Chuck Johnson, again, I would like to place this item back on the agenda at the next council meeting, is a detailed report 
line item report based on what we spent on air conditioners, what we spent for the elevators, just a dollar amount. But one of the things going into rural water that we requested was to see and take a look at the dollar amount based on what we passed in the orders, on the amount of money that we spent on the hotel and what we continue to spend. I know we have some crucial decisions to make in the near future as we look at whether we would like to keep that hotel open. But in the meantime, the 80,000 from capital maintenance, 140,000 that we just approved a few weeks ago, that's over $200,000. I would think if we are spending that type of money, and I don't know because I hadn't received the report, you know, I would like to see where the taxpayers' dollars are going. Because as representatives, all of us, you know, it's, it's important to me mm -hmm. that that is done. Accountability, you know, from the administration to this council. Mr. Silva has worked and, uh, with the current group and the past group on things that needs to be done, so far as the future of that hotel, as a liaison between the council and the administration. And this report that came down from the Department of Health was as of July 1st. Rural water took place two to three weeks later. So my concern is, if we spent money on capital maintenance, why the work wasn't done prior to the convention? Or what wasn't done? Why would I receive this from the New Zealand Department of Health? And Madam Clerk, I would like you to make a copy of this to pass to all council. Why would we have this type of, of report you know, that really concerns me. We want the best for our community, we want the best for the city, and seeing that that hotel stays open. But we have some tough decisions to make over the next few weeks based on that hotel. I'm sure Mr. Chuck Johnson will tell us that as city attorney. But those are my concerns to you as my fellow council. You see, where we are, the amount of money we have spent, you know, of course, we've been supporting this hotel over the last you know, a couple of years to make sure it stays open. But again, we have to make a tough decision based on this hotel, based on its future, based on how it's maintained, and based on what we would do with it. Uh, thank you. The chair recognizes Ms. Gibson. Um, I, I'd just like to add to make sure that the public understands we are asking for an expenditure report for money that the council approved to be used on the hotel. Um, the administration has a staff of people. I really don't understand why this is so difficult to get a document, an expense report. We gave you this dollar amount. You spent it on this list of things. That's what we have been asking for, just in case anybody out there in the public needed some clarification on that. that that's what we've asked for. We've got this big binder right here as of late, the expenses are not in here. Yeah. Thank, I, you, thank I you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, that, Mr. President. Yeah. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Johnson. The um, administration is going to provide the council with detailed figures on the expenditures. We're tracking the individual line items which you asked for, which is a uh, very uh, time-consuming and tedious process. I will say I've seen the preliminary numbers um, well, we want to make sure that the numbers are absolutely accurate before we make those public. We don't want to make any mistakes. Ordinance number 99-2009 authorized $1.167 million, and uh, the numbers that I've seen were well below that. That's excluding the settlement with Capital One. We will provide those numbers uh, to the council, Mr. Johnson, once we have the report in final form. Thank you. I appreciate that. So that's your we we understood the task that you asked. We want to make sure that uh, the product we provide is accurate. All right. Thank you. What we received, I want to tell the public, we received the Global Hospitality Insights. It's several pages from a booklet from Hospitality Hotels from Ernest & Young. Uh, it talks about the hotel industry. How does it make money? The slow economic. We didn't ask for this. We could have saved this paper. We also received this booklet. Uh, it has some of the ordinances, and some of these items are also in this. I appreciate the mayor binding it, but we didn't ask for it. 
all this talks about the hotel industry, the slump and so forth. This is a smaller market. Uh, we're not in New York, we're not Orlando. It's difficult to get a hotel of any stature in this area, especially downtown when you have nothing downtown to, to bring anybody down. But these are documents that uh, the mayor could have, to be honest, he could have kept because this is not what we asked. We want the expenditures. If we spent money on beds, we want to see receipts for beds. If we spent money on sheets, show us receipts. If we spent money on food, show us receipts. Be show us what we spent the money on because we have to be accountable. We just can't just keep putting money over there. And that's our major concern. Any other questions from this uh, body? Uh, could I address that, Mr. Johnson? Go ahead. Um, Mr. Lavadan, the reason the mayor provided you with that information is because you have some serious policy issues to decide. There are other cities that are facing uh, similar economic conditions, similar downtown issues uh, as the ones we're facing. So you can make an informed decision the uh, mayor thought that the best approach would be to provide the council with the most information uh, available, the same kind of information that we look at when we make policy decisions that we recommend to you, sir. So uh, those documents that you feel are unnecessary, we felt they'd be good for your uh, edification or your, your uh, process, whatever process you use to educate yourself about the issues that the city is facing. It's, it's your choice to read it or not. All right. I know. I've, I've read them. I'm familiar with it. Chair recognizes Ms. Gibson and Mr. President, and then I'm going to ask uh, several, two people asked to be, to uh, speak on this topic. Uh, another point of clarification. The agenda item is, is to hear a report from the administration concerning the expenses and income for the Alexander Fulton Hotel. Appreciate the document, understand that it is for our education on this issue so that in the future we can make better decisions, but this document should not have been given to us as the report for the question that we ask. Th that is, that's the point. I mean, we understand what it is here for, Mr. Johnson, and actually appreciate it, because we do want to make informed decisions when it's time for us to make those decisions, but this report was submitted as the report for the question asked. The, the report will be supplemented with the figures, Ms. Right. Gibson. Thank you. Thank you, so the, the expenditures are public, okay. and I, I wouldn't be standing here telling you that uh, we're well below the 1.167 that you authorized in 2009, if I didn't know that. Okay, okay Mr. Johnson, as soon as y'all have that report uh, ready, uh, could you inform the uh, clerk first? I said, as soon as you have that report prepared, can you inform the clerk oh, so we can? Yes, we'll provide yeah. it to the council as yeah, soon as we, we have it in the proper form. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at this time, the chair recognizes Ms. Underwood and then Mr. Jules Green. Uh, Mr. Jules, I'm going to step forward. Okay. I will yield. Mr. Jules, please step forward. Amen. Amen. Three minutes for Mr. Green. Good afternoon, council, again. Uh, in recognition of the report that Mr. Johnson gave. Now, I didn't get his report, but from Greg Amon's blog, safeelouisiana.com, there are 16 violations at the Fulton. Mayor Roy, a couple of weeks ago, after the rural water people left, he made a comment about that they needed, people wanted them to provide soap at the hotel. The soap was needed for the employees who used the bathroom, who cooked the food. It's in the report. You can re read it, go online, and get it. Now, the report came after a complaint was filed in June. The report was filed July 1. After that report came out, <coughs> Noble took over. Rural Water came a couple of days later. My question is, who is at fault for the Fulton's deplorable state? Is it HIP, or is it the city of Alexander, or is it both? Because Noble inherited what they received. So if you're going to stand up as the mayor and say they needed soap, make sure you tell them who needed the soap, why they needed the soap, and what section they needed the soap. Because surely, 
who wants to eat at a restaurant when the employees come out with no accessible items to wash their hands and serve you one of their specialty burgers? I thank you for your time. No. We need an answer. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Gail Underwood. You want to speak real quick? No, I think Mr. Johnson wants to make a comment. He wants to. Yes. I okay, just, go ahead. I, I'd just like to respond to that. Um, one of the thing that, things that the public needs to understand and that some members of this body need also to understand, the city is not the operator of the hotel. Since 2006, the operators of the hotel have been Raj Patel's NR Group, Fred Rosenfeld's company, Noble and HIP. Whatever report Mr. Johnson is referring to from the health department, those violations would be attributable to the operator, not to the city. There are none of our employees who work in the kitchen at the hotel. Um, and Please, I'm having, turn, I'm having a, Please turn your phone off. I'm, I'm having a really hard time understanding how y'all feel bad-mouthing a public asset and in, a, in, a, in essence, depreciating its value publicly is going to help us when it's time to sell the hotel. It, it just doesn't make any sense. We got that hotel by operation of law, Ms. Gibson. We didn't spend one penny constructing that tower. We got it because we beat Capital One in court. They thought they had a mortgage on the entire thing. They were wrong. When Raj Patel defaulted on the lease and Capital One refused to cure the defaults and name a new operator, their leasehold mortgage was terminated, which gave ownership of the entire property to the city. We didn't ask for it. We got it because <laughs> the other parties to the contract didn't fulfill their obligations. Do we want to be in the hotel business? Absolutely not. But does it make any sense whatsoever to depreciate the value of a public asset, something that we want to unload, want to sell, want to get rid of ourselves? To me, it doesn't. It makes no sense. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Ms. Underwood and Ms. Gibson, you can speak while she's talking, while she's walking up. Oh, okay. Um, my comment, um, Attorney Johnson, is that we do own the hotel. So it is ultimately our responsibility. We may not be over there doing the day-to-day -day operations, but as long as we are pumping in tax people's dollars into that hotel, then we are responsible. And if, and if the operation is not being um, handled properly by the folks that are operating it, then that needs to be addressed by the owners of whom we are. Let me I'll say something. Go ahead. Real I'm quick. sorry. What disappoints us is that uh, HIP was operating the hotel. They leave right before rural water, and then we get all these complaints. There was no monitoring, no supervision, no nothing. Just run the hotel. If we own an asset, we have to monitor to make sure it's being taken care of. That's our biggest problem. If you had issues at the, at the fort, at least contact the council and say, hey, we have some problems. We don't hear anything. And then we ask questions, everybody's so secretive and deceptive and misleading, we don't know what's going on with the hotel. But then we hear these complaints during a convention, and we're constantly putting money in it, then that gets our ear because we don't want taxpayers' money. We don't have a big money tree in the back, we can just pull thousands and millions of dollars. This, this is the people's money, we have to be accountable for the people's money. And they expect us to make good decisions, so I hate the idea that we spend all our time on HIP, and it looks like HIP did a super job of running to the ground. They should have at least said, hey, we have some problems, Mayor, let's go do something. Let's correct the problem. Don't just leave it in rural waters here. That's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. If we own something, let's take care of it. But don't let a company run into the ground. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ms. Ms. Uh, Ms. Gale. Thank you for giving me extra time and let Mr. Green go by because I have to get calm and count my ten, count to 10. First of all, I understand that $80,000, $140,000 came out of District 1 money. I ask that no more be taken from this district. Every other district has projects going. Over there has nothing. Um, it's funny to me. I'm not computer smart. I can turn on, get email, and send email and look things up. But I have a CPA that right now, if I call him, can put the last four digits of mine and my husband's Social Security number and instantly pull up 20 or 30 years of tax reports. And it's funny to me that we cannot get a simple statement 
a simple answer to anything. My suggestion is <clears throat> somebody, if it takes me or somebody, if you want to help me, I'm ready to call in the federal government, I'm ready to call in the Attorney General and have them do an independent audit of this city of Alexandria. The reports are frivolous, they're long-winded, and all we want is simple answers. If it takes going to the Attorney General or to the federal government because federal money is involved in our city finances, then let's do it. Thank you. Ms. Gale, we all like simple answers, but it's hard to get simple answers from, the, from, the, from this administration. Uh, is there any other questions or comments on the Fulton? There being none, uh, we got item number two. Do you want to Item number two. That's what you got to do. That's the bond. That's the bond. Let's talk about the bond proposal. I think Ms. Uh, okay. Let me read that. Well, just let me read. Item number two, discuss declaring the intention of the city council, city of state of Louisiana. Uh, acting state of Louisiana to issue utility revenue bonds for the city and in, in one or more series in the amount not to exceed $2 million. Any questions or comments about this issue? Yeah, you want to say anything about this? Yeah, only very simply. They, they, they set forth all the regulations co concerning this. This is a procedural deal that must be voted on tonight, and the bonding people will run through if it's already scheduled <coughs> from now through December. This is not the first rodeo. I think you sent out all the information, did you not, Madam Clerk, showing the procedure? So I think all we have to do with that is just a procedural matter. Ms. Chair, recognize Ms. Gibson. Um, I, I ask for this to be put back uh, in committee so that we can discuss um, publicly some education that I learned on this procedure and, and the administration's uh, procedure. If folks remember at the last meeting before we did this, um, I did submit a motion to ask for the bond council to be changed. Of course, the administration ran in and said because of the charter, we could not do that. Um, so, of course, I did not get the support of a second. Want the public to understand the only reason I asked for it to be changed, from my understanding, according to the city attorney, possibly about 15 years or so now, um, this one particular uh, bond attorney has been used for every single deal in the city of Alexandria every single bonding deal. I am looking for some diversity. I am looking for us to spread some projects and some things around to other qualified people. There is a red book uh, for the public to know of those who are qualified to do bond work throughout the state. Um, it's rather small, it's a specialized uh, you know, area of law, but there are other ones that are qualified to do it, except for the one that we've been using for 15 years. Per the charter, according to the administration, uh, running in at that time telling us we couldn't do it, we couldn't violate the charter. Um, I then wanted to, of course, understand better uh, how the procedure does take place in all of this. So I had a, a conversation outside with our city attorney who uh, educated me on the process of choosing bond attorneys and all of that. What I was told by our city attorney, and thank <coughs> goodness uh, President Johnson walked in on that conversation as well, I was told that with this being a DHH, Department of Ho Health and Hospitals bond, that DHH has their own bond council and that DHH chooses the bond council that works for the municipality. Then went on to question, well that's interesting that DHH chose the same bond council that we've been using for 15 years. It was explained to me, oh they're great, they do such awesome work, they just so happen to be chose again went on in addition to ask then about the coal bond councils, which happened to be some local people. So then I asked, well, how did the coal bond councils get chosen? Again, I was told that it was through the DHH, they cho their council chooses even the coal bond council. In that same conversation, Attorney Johnson did correct himself um, that that right. statement was not true get and that right. he chose the bond council, get the coal right. bond councils, and of course, it happens to be some African Americans, and they were, he was female. trying to be in female, female, uh, female African Americans. Diverse. Very diverse, that he was trying to be in compliance with our AFEAT program. Took all of that. Um, unfortunately, uh, as, as a council person, uh, I am new to this. I ask a whole lot of questions. Sometimes folks that think that they're out of the box are inappropriate. But I ask a lot of questions because I want to learn. Unfortunately, in this situation, I then had to go outside 
of our administration and the advice of our own city attorney. And I actually contacted DHH's attorney, who is a Mr. David Wolf, and I asked him to explain to me how the process takes place. I have an email from him even after our conversation, because of course I wanted to have this information in writing. I then found out that DHH does not choose a municipality's council. The municipality chooses their own council. In fact, when it comes to DHH bond issues, I never said that DHH when it comes chose to Mr. Grant J Mr. Johnson, that, that, that I, I that said that DHH Mr. Johnson, chose Mr. Adams Johnson, and hold on. No, stop, you stop, hold on. Stop. She's no, misrepresenting no, what I said. Mr. Johnson, I'm going to let you speak. Let her go. You're going to go next. Res respect our meeting. I'm not going to let you pounce on me just like the mayor. Let her talk and you'll respond. I'm sorry, Ms. Gibson. That's go okay. ahead. Like I said, I had a telephone conversation with Mr. Wolf, but then I also asked him if he could put the procedure in writing. So anybody that wants a copy, I do have this email in writing where he explains the process. Actually, with DEQ and DHH's revolving loan funds, there is no negotiating as with other bond terms and bond issues. You, can, you, have, you need that specialized counsel because sometimes there is some negotiating with the terms of the bond. When it comes to DHH and DEQ bonds, there is no negotiating. Whatever their terms are, whatever their interest rate is, that is what it is. He went on to explain, and again, I have this in writing, that with DHH and DEQ funds like this, actually he can, his, his group, Adams and Reese, can actually do all of the work for the city of Alexandria, because pretty frankly, we're gonna pay him. If we chose our own council, we would pay that person as well. But he said, and in this letter he states, he could do all of the work for the city of Alexandria, and then our staff attorneys can review it. There is no negotiating. A staff attorney can review those, all of that documentation, and the deal can be done. In short, the city of Alexandria could have saved about $25,000 by just using DHH's attorney to do all of the work and then our three staff attorneys that we have, but I'm sure particularly our city attorney because he is the one with the most expertise, could then just review those documents and the deal would be done. So I wanted the public to know that because I personally have a problem with that. We talk about legal fees all the time, and that is an area where some legal fees could have been saved. On traditional bond issues, everyone, I want you to know that yes, it is necessary for us to have our own bond council to make sure that we get the best deal possible. But when it comes to DHH and DEQ's revolving loan funds, of which we are pursuing, it is not necessary for us to hire our own counsel. Thank you, Ms. Gibson. I'm glad somebody's cognizant of saving the taxpayers' money because our legal fees are getting out of control and we have to be prudent with the money. The legal fees are not out of control. The, the, I wish go, you go, would go, stop go, go saying ahead, that. Mr. That's Johnson. just a ridiculous Mr. Johnson, statement. go ahead and respond here. Let's go ahead and well, respond. Let me respond to your ridiculous statement. The legal okay. fees are not out of control. I am a steward of the public fist, sir, and I've never spent one dollar that I thought was inappropriately spent. So I resent those silly kinds of comments and you have no documentation to back it up. It's nothing but demagoguery, sir. And I know y'all are sick of it and I'm sick of it too. And I don't care if you like that statement or not. I don't now care. let me respond so to I you. I have Ms. documentation. Yes. Me. Let me respond let's to you, ma'am. Okay. The two lawyers. Excuse me one minute, Mr. Johnson. Okay. Sure. Let's, let's discuss subject matter, keep it at that point. Let's do it on a timely matter so we can move on. The two lawyers who were selected as co-counsel in this case were selected by myself and my staff. We did an interview process so that we could build capacity in an area of the legal community which has been traditionally excluded from bond counsel work. Black lawyers, and for the most part women, historically have not had the opportunity, Ms. Gibson, to do that type I am of work. Aware. The two lawyers we selected are competent. Mm -hmm. They are African-American females. Yes, they are. And when they finish this work and maybe one or two other issues, they'll be able to get into the Red Book and do this type of work. I have never been co-counsel on a bond issue, ma'am. 
and I don't pretend to be qualified in that issue in that area. That's why we have Grant Sluter. The 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 role of the city attorney is to protect the interests of the city, man. And if I felt like we had a legal issue where I needed someone with more expertise than myself, I think the taxpayers would appreciate me bringing that person on to make sure that there are no mistakes made because in these bond issues, if you make a mistake, if you commit malpractice, you're talking about millions of dollars that would have to repay, be repaid. And uh, personally, I'm not giving you any of my millions, okay? Um, the, um, if, if the whole goal of this process is to decide who the lawyers are, I can tell you that's not going to happen. It is the not. The council will it is never not. Just as I started tell my me statement. what lawyer will participate on any specific task. There's been two years of litigation in the courts to decide that issue. The name of the case is Jacques Roy versus Myron Lawson and others. And I can tell you, if we get back into the realm of these charter violations, what you're going to do is get yourself sued, you're going to be personally liable for the debt, and the city will not provide your defense. So um, we need our own representation in this case. I want Grant Sluter on the case. I don't think we're wasting money. There's no one, including myself, on my staff who I feel has the level of expertise to review the documents from our perspective. That's why we have representation. I don't think it's a waste of money at all, ma'am. Do you have any, okay, Ms. Gibson? I disagree with that. Um, and no, that just like I said when I started this, it is not about changing the legal counsel, but it is about making the citizens aware First of all, that me trying to get educated and learn how all of this works, I was not told the truth. And then I had to go back and research on my own to find out what the truth is. You know, that makes, that makes a working relationship really difficult because we are here and we should be able to trust each other and share information for us to move projects, move things forward. So this is not about changing the council. Yes, that the bond council. Yes, that was my initial desire. And again, it was to spread the work around. Have you ever met Scott okay. Crawford? I have spoken with Mr. Have Crawford. Have you ever seen him in person? I have spoken with Mr. Crawford. Have you ever seen him? Do you know I anything about his work? The yes, quality I do. of his work. Go ahead. I do know about Let's his work. Let's do it. Finish one. Let's wrap this up. We wrap this up. What's the name I, of his I, I just wanted, oh, the, the, I just wanted farm, the public Gibbs. to know what's what's the name Johnson, what the right? real story was and that we could have saved some money on this. Okay. Mr. Johnson, I'm going to wrap this part of the, the issue up. Okay, let's go to, um, that's it on, on that issue. We have... Um, well, why you get, do you, are we going to recommend to the full council, uh, number two? It was just for discussion. It was for discussion. It's already on there. It was it's just for discussion. It's already okay. Done. Done. Is our discussion. That'll wrap up uh, finance committee at this time. I want to make nice that I'm on others. May I make a comment? Real quick. Yeah. For the next meeting, I like to do, since we're all talking about saving the taxpayers' money, we have to be careful how we spend the money because I've heard this thing time and time and time again. I use an expression you reprimanded me last time. I'll use it again. We screwed up on something. In the next meeting, I'll tell you what the screw up is, number one. Number two, I'd also like to have an accounting through the office what we're doing, I'm talking about we as a council, to show that we too are being exemplary citizens and trying to curtail our expenses. I'd like to know what our budget is and what we have done to date. Okay. Can, may I comment on that one right quick? Um, yeah. According to the budget that we just passed, we cut our expenses were cut by $40,000. I didn't ask that question. But I, I want to make sure that everyone understands. Yeah, we, we cut okay. our budget because the administration didn't. I didn't the administration didn't. I asked the question. Predicated on this current budget, what have our expenses been to date? That's all. Okay. Do you want the administration's budget too? No. We'll get both. Mm -hmm. We'll get both. That's not a you're going to get anyway. Yeah. But okay. if you want to question ours, sure, we, we've please. cut out. We always cut out. Yeah. We have no problem with that. Uh, I hope this, this uh, from certain council does not point of retaliation because of what we want based on what the needs of this community and city are. Uh, 
Our goal is to make sure that you know within the city council, we're taking care of business. I will say that as president of the Association of Council Presidents, we're taking care of business. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, that's Mr. Howard requested some information. We do have that for you. Provide that to you, and you can read it and come back at the next council meeting based on your concerns, based on your concerns along those with those areas of District Three. With that said, we will move directly into full council meeting at this time. I would like for the invocation to be given by Councilman Jim Ballard, with the pledge to be given by Councilman Chuck Fowler. Dear Lord, look over this council meeting and please bring rain to this area, which is badly needed. I heard thunder outside, so maybe our answers might be, pr uh, our prayers might be answered already, but uh, for this town uh, and for this country, let's pray to the Lord. Amen. May I ask you to remain standing for a brief moment before we have a pleasure with and acknowledge the respect of the good departed former uh, attorney city, an exemplary citizen, a wonderful father, Mr. Howard Gist. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, roll call. Present. Mr. Fowler? Here. Ms. Gibson? Present. Mr. Ballard? Here. Mr. Goings? Present. Mr. Silver? Present. Mr. Johnson? Present. Mr. President, you have a quorum? Thank you, Madam Clerk. Consent calendar. Uh, five finance, eight finance, ten finance. Just put that down. Move. Move by Councilman Silver, second by Councilman Fowler. Discussion here and none. All in favor, let me know by saying aye. Aye. No opposition. It passes. Madam Clerk, item L. Ordinances for final adoption subject to a public hearing, number 14, to consider final adoption of an ordinance authorizing the mayor to accept the low bid submitted for the purchase of six police motorcycles with trade ins for the Alexandria Police Department. Move. Second. Moved by Councilwoman Gibson, second by Councilman Fowler. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 No opposition, the motion passed. Number 15, to consider final adoption of an ordinance amending capital budget to recognize $150,000 of CDBG disaster recovery funds for the GIS mapping of the city storm drainage system. Second. Moved by Councilman Fowler, second by Councilwoman Gibson. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. No opposition, the motion passed. Number 16, to consider final adoption of an ordinance authorizing acquisition of parcel number 737 required for the Sugar House Road drainage project. Move. Moved by Councilman Fowler. Second. Second by Councilwoman Gibson. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 No opposition, the motion passed. Number 17, to consider final adoption of an ordinance Authorizing acquisition of parcel number 777 required for the Horseshoe and Masonic Drive turn lane project. Move. Moved by Councilman Fowler. Second. Second by Councilman Villard. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 No opposition, the motion passed. Number 18, to consider final adoption of an ordinance authorizing execution of a contract between the city and Progressive Construction Company for safe routes to school grant L.S. Rugg Elementary School. Moved. Moved by Councilwoman Gibson. Second. Second by Councilman Villard. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. No opposition, the motion passed. Number 19, to consider final adoption of an ordinance authorizing the mayor on behalf of the city to enter into necessary contracts, including a contract and development agreement with Third Street Partners and New Horizons Development providing for a sale of six acres, more or less, of property from the city and otherwise concerning a portion of property 
formerly being part of the Hodges Stockyard Track located on 3rd Street to set out and provide relative to terms and conditions in a cooperative endeavor and development agreement between the parties to authorize a contract to sell and a contract of sale of property for consideration from the city to the third parties for development and construction activities on the project site, including new construction of commercial improvements and other facilities and relative to third parties constructing an additional improvement, River Place Space 2, providing for 64 additional rental units on a portion of the property to authorize certain funding from SPARC or the capital budget for assisting development and infrastructure costs to authorize a lease of a substation located on the subject property, authorizing incentives and public works related to the proposed cooperative endeavor, and to authorize security instruments and authority for the mayor or his designee to subordinate security instruments if necessary pertaining thereto, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. This item came by committee in opposition. Uh, can we uh, have a motion second and that reference uh, from our representative of the committee, which is Councilman Jonathan Goins, district, and I also would like to have a roll call vote on this matter. I'm moving for discussion. Uh, let, let me ask this. Uh, the gentleman that's in, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. You second it? No. You need a second? We need to do this, we, let's have a motion second just for discussion. I'll second. We, we have a motion by who? Who made the motion? He did. Motion by Councilman Goins, second by Councilman Fowler for discussion. Discussion. Let's have it. Councilman Fowler. Uh, this item uh, had a lot of controversy both sides, uh, and it's a it's a tremendous uh, amount of money to to uh, pass up. The gentleman that uh, is heading up the project said if it does. If he does not complete it in two weeks, it goes away. He can't do it. Uh, I'd ask that we simply just delay it for two weeks. If for some reason someone has an epiphany or if there is a change of heart uh, for the project, if people that are far come back uh, and speak to it, that's fine. We call a special meeting and we may be able to do it. If nothing happens, it goes away anyway because the gentleman said if it's not done in two weeks, it's not done. So. I'd ask that we consider that. Councilman Goins. Once again, as I uh, stated in the committee, uh, I support the project. I, I, I love the project. I think it will uh, do well uh, for the lower third community and the city of Alexandria. However, uh, the citizens that live there that I represent, uh, I'm their voice. I'm their voice up here. I, I make decisions uh, for them. I, I speak for the elderly women that can't come to council meeting and speak themselves. And uh, it's apparent that the citizens that live in that area are opposed to it. Uh, so that's why I'm opposed to it. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, I'd like to direct a question. With that, ha having said that, though, you're asking about, you know, to have further discussion. Wouldn't that be counter proposal, be, uh, counterproductive, since for all practical purposes you indicated that perhaps those persons who are for it would not come here, or do you want a chance, taking a chance two weeks from now, asking more people to come to see if there's any change in voice? Or do you just want to vote on it? I think, uh, first, I, I didn't ask any questions. Uh, the meeting was at 3.30. Uh, it was published. Citizens they, they came should, up. You should have been here. Okay. I represented myself, it would be different. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna call for the question with a roll call vote. Madam Clerk. We the the motion. motion. Can I have a motion? motion? Yeah, we need a motion and a second. Well, motion to discuss. So need a motion to discuss. Yeah. I move that uh, we, we make a motion to uh, in opposition of it. Uh, do you have a second? In opposition of it. Do we understand? Am I right? I mean, do we need to do that? Oh, no, it's a vote. Vote off. 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 Yes or no? Madam Clerk, roll call. A yes vote would be a vote in favor of passage. And no vote would be in opposition. Right. So is that a motion by Mr. Warbordain? Right. Did you second it? No, I didn't second it. Motion to discuss, but we don't need a vote. Right. And Mr. Fowler seconded it. We were already discussing. We need to go ahead and take the vote. Am I right? Yeah, now the motion. Consider adoption 
Yeah. Which means if, you, if you're in favor of the motion to adopt it, you've got to vote yes. If you're against it, you'll vote no. Can we get a motion second? Let's, let's move it. Moved already. Moved, okay. moved by Councilman okay. Goins, second by Councilman Lowndes. Roll call vote. Mr. Goins. No. Mr. Silver. Abstain. Mr. Johnson. No. Mr. Larbadine. No. Mr. Fowler. Yes. Ms. Gibson. No. Mr. Villard. No. Mr. President, you have one yes, five no's, and one abstaining. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So it fails. Move to the next item on the agenda. Committees. Okay. I'd like to also recommend. Just one second. Point of order, please. Before we adjourn, I would like to recommend that we send a, a letter to the family of Howard Hist for all the years that he served to the community and the outstanding work he performed. Okay, Madam Clerk. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, she, she has that information. Right. Okay, let's go directly to the committee and we'll wrap up. Finance Committee, Mr. Lauberdine. No report, but I want to say something legal with Mr. Goins. We'll get to it. Public Works, Mr. Silva. None. Legal Committee, Mr. Goins. No okay. Can I say something real quick? Uh, to the public, uh, you all have been hearing about the Clico case, the attorney's case. That's the case involving Ms. Bridget Brown, Mr. Sharp, Mr. Davis, and that, ca that case will resume. Uh, there's a green sheet of paper. Uh, you can pick up the dates. We're asking the public to come by. You want to get some information on the Clico case, this is the trial to go to. The trial date for August is this August the 26th, which is Friday at 9 a.m. They have a court date Monday, August 29th at 9 a.m., Tuesday, August 30th at 9 a.m., Wednesday, August 31st, 9 a.m. We're in federal court uh, at 515 Murray Street in Alexandria, second floor, Judge Drell. Uh, you cannot bring your cell phone. October date is October 17th on a Monday at 9 a.m. November date is Friday, November 18th, 2011, 9 a.m. If you have any time to come to the trial, it would be very informative on, on the Clico case. Uh, a lot of information will be distributed. It's important that you see where your money's going, and there's a lot of issues in regard to Clico and why your bills are the way they are. Uh, if you'd like to, there's a green notice. You can take that out, pass to your neighbors, neighborhood groups. It's important that we participate and we listen and learn because there's some items that, uh, some things that were going on that the council did not know about. But if you go to trial, I think you'll have some privy and some information to that. So please go. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Goins. Utility, Utility Committee, Mr. Fowler. No report. Community no report. Development, Ms. Gibson. No report. Personnel, Mr. Valor. No report. Public Safety, Ms. Gibson. No report. a and &E Review, Mr. Goins. No report. Economic Development, Mr. Larverdane. No report. Governmental Affairs, Mr. Goins. No report. Uh, one thing I would like to add on the Government Affairs, uh, Councilman Goins, maybe at the next meeting, you could bring us up to uh, up to date on where we are with the uh, reapportionment assessment. Uh, we can add that, Madam Clerk, uh, because it's something that we do have to do over the next few months as we leave into the next year. Yes, sir. And I also would like to recognize uh, Power City uh, Councilman Kevin Doyle. Thank you for being here. <laughs> nothing else coming for the Alexander City Council. This meeting is adjourned.
for community-based planning. The Alexandria City Council is an active body of successful individuals charged with conducting the legislative business of our city. Your council meets on a regular basis and works hard to make our city a place that we can all be proud of. Here are your council members. Roosevelt Johnson represents Alexandria as city councilman at large. Mr. Johnson is a graduate of Natchitoches Central High School and Southern University and was elected to the Alexandria City Council in 2003 and has served on many council committees. Roosevelt Johnson is very active in the affairs of his community and serves on many boards and organizations in Louisiana. In 2008, Edward Larvadane III was elected to his first term in public office representing District 1. He attended Alexandria Senior High School, graduated from Southern University in Baton Rouge with a degree in political science in 1987, and he earned his Juris Doctorate from Southern University Law Center in 1992. Mr. Larvadane is currently in private law practice. He is past president of the Arts Council of Central Louisiana and a member of the Rose of Sharon Baptist Church. Mitzi Gibson was elected in 2010 to her first term to represent District 2. Ms. Gibson, the first African-American female elected to the Alexandria City Council, has a Bachelor of Science degree in marketing with a major in both broadcasting and journalism from Grambling State University. Mitzi Gibson is also very active in our community, serving on many boards and organizations in Louisiana. Jonathan D. Goins was elected to his first term to represent District 3 in 2008. He is a 1999 graduate of Peabody Magnet High School and is a graduate of Southern University and the Law Center. He is a local attorney in private practice. Harry Silver, councilman for District 4, was re-elected in 2010. Mr. Silver earned his law degree from Rutgers University and for over 50 years has been active in his community and engaged in retail sales and is chairman of one of Alex.